Green Left TV interviewed Belinda Hawkins, author of the book Every Parent's Nightmare, the story of Jock Power Freeman, whom Green Left Weekly readers will be familiar with. We started by asking Belinda about the investigation and the conditions of the prison in Sofia where Jock is imprisoned. Each time I've gone into Sofia Central Prison, a notoriously run-down place, overcrowded, uh, and uh, a place where there's uh, insufficient to eat, um, insufficient nutrition, and uh, where the whole place is literally crumbling around you. It's a, it's a, I've been to a, many prisons around the world, and I can only think of one in Chiapas in uh, Mexico that, that, uh, that beat uh, Sofia Central Prison for horribleness, if you like. Um, among the many things that the investigation failed to produce, it failed to secure something as basic as CCTV footage. That footage really and truly just disappeared as far as I can see. And the other thing it failed to do was to test what Jock Polferman was saying had happened. Uh, the gypsies Jock claimed to be helping were never sought for, were never found. Uh, material like uh, lumps of concrete Jock claimed were being thrown at him weren't picked up and tested for blood or for anything else. There was a raft of things that weren't done uh, in those critical 24 hours after Polferman was arrested. How important is people's involvement uh, from Green Left Weekly and organisations such as Socialist Alliance to Jock's morale? I think that any prisoner who's incarcerated for any length of time wants to feel that people remember who they are, that people support them, if you like. Jock's no different. In all my discussions with Jock, uh, he has said he's welcomed people writing letters to him, people um, talking about him in media, people talking with each other about his case in particular. Uh, and so I've no reason to believe that uh, that Met readers of your newspaper uh, who, who wrote to Jock wouldn't be received with the same amount of uh, enthusiasm. Jock always uh, greets visitors with almost a whoop of glee. He's glad to see other people. He is a young man who's full of enthusiasm uh, and he loves to argue, he loves to debate with me. Um, he does all but sit uh, silently and dejectedly uh, in front of one when one is visiting. We asked Belinda about the opportunity for Jock to be transferred to Australia to serve out his sentence. Bulgaria has recently uh, said that they won't transfer Jock to an Australian prison and my sense is from media reporting about the case and about transfer uh, there is a fear that Jock would be released if he was transferred. Now, there is no cause to fear that. As f to the best of my understanding, Jock would serve his sentence in the Australian prison. He would be open for parole in the same manner that he should be in Bulgaria. Uh, but in Bulgaria, parole is seldom given. It's an abuse of human rights to be away from your family and well, friends, but in particular your family, and to be so far away. If prison is to have any correctional basis to it, if it's to help reform someone like Jock Polferman, which is the purpose of it, then it's also considered uh, more likely to do so if the person is close to their home and their family. And that's only going to happen in this situation if the Bulgarian Prosecutor General decides to change his mind and to allow the transfer of Jock to a prison in New South Wales. Um, and there already is a prison uh, set up and willing to take him. It's just got to get that green light from the Bulgarian authorities. Okay. Belinda, how important is it to keep the profile up of, of the Power for Human case and to keep the pressure on the Australian government not to neglect Jock while he's in prison over there? I think it is important that the Australian government continues to uh, press Bulgaria, to urge Bulgaria to reconsider its decision 
on the prisoner transfer, given that both countries are signatories to an international agreement. It seems almost pointless to sign an agreement like that if you're not going to enter it in good faith. Uh, of course, Bulgaria doesn't have to agree to transfer Jock Polferman, uh, but I, I would hope that the Australian government would press upon it its um, most sincere desire to see that take place. And uh, I, I suppose uh, it, people can remind their elected constituents that that's what they would like to see done. I've read in Green Left Weekly that uh, Jock is involved in organising uh, the prisoners in the prison in Sofia. Could you tell us a little bit about his work and the conflict that that has led to within the system over there? Jock is irrepressible. What got Jock into trouble in the first place, what's likely to have got Jock into trouble in the first place, is probably what will get him into trouble now if it hasn't already done so. Jock's won two court battles, one to do with he, the treatment of him in prison, the other and possibly more important one was to see established the first ever Bulgarian Convicted Prisoners Association, which is like a union. So. That association is now uh, given proper status by a court, and it was Jock who steered that with help from some other prisoners in Sofia Central Prison.